Move over, the French. These enemies are much closer to home. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 what the f British feuds. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at those wacky, left of center, out of nowhere, inexplicable, or just plain long lasting feuds between famous Britons and their equally well known peers. Number 10 Craig David and Lee Francis. Craig David's trouble began in 1999 when he agreed to appear on Artful Dodger's Re Rewind, The Crowd Say Bo Selector. In 2002, that mistake would come back to haunt him, providing Lee Francis with not only a title for his new sketch series, but also material. Drop a bow, can I get a rewind? This resulted in Craig being known to at least a portion of the general public as a pants wetting, loony northerner rather than one half of the penultimate number two hit of the last millennium. Would you like a drink with me? Please, stop nodding your head, he's not that good. However, by 2014, the two would declare peace, with David admitting that some of his displeasure was actually the work of his PR team. Craig David apparently got wound up, but then I heard it was false, he didn't get wound up. <laughs> and anyway, I apologise on behalf of Ave Maria, now we're friends. Number 9, Danny Dyer and Mark Wright. In a way, this is an issue between Mark Wright and Danny Dyer's daughter, Danny. Celebrating her parents' upcoming nuptials in August of 2016, Danny began hurling insults, one in particular, at Wright's crew. When a dad entered the fray, he soon made his way to the floor, collecting kicks and a mildly blackened eye. However, Danny and Mark have issues going back to at least 2013, when Dyer was mistaken for Wright and unloaded everything he hated about him, including his ambitions to be James Bond, the radio station he works for, and the yogurt he endorsed, resulting in Wright slapping him at a charity football match. Come on, mate. You and me, son. Oh. Number 8. Paul Hollywood and Mary Berry their entire relationship revolves around cakes. I think they were stunning. It's delicious, absolutely delicious. Thank you. How could things have gone so sour? Well, two things happened that Mary Berry found quite disagreeable. When the Great British Bake Off hitched its wagon to Channel 4, Paul Hollywood followed suit, making him the only member of the on-screen talent to do so. But Hollywood's next move is the one that really frosted their relationship. He divorced his wife Alexandra and sparked up a coupling with the much younger woman who'd been hired to organize her birthday party. The display is so good. We come to the tart. That little tart was fine. Number 7 Keith Richards and Mick Jagger. Issues between the Glimmer twins date back to either the 1970s, when Keith was deep into heroin use, or the 1980s, when he got clean. But read either way, it comes down to a resentment on Keith's side for Mick taking greater control of the Rolling Stones while Richards was busy mastering the needle and spoon. The two spent the 80s at odds, highlighted by both going solo and Jagger refusing to tour with the Stones, but capped by the two returning to record and support 1989's Steel Wheels. However, Keith has still taken shots at Mick over the years, from mocking his solo efforts to ridiculing his knighthood, his manhood, and his children. Number 6 Lena Headey and Jerome Flynn. She plays Cersei, he plays Bronn, and there's a reason you never see them on screen together. While details are scant, it became known in 2014 that Heidi and Flynn had briefly dated in or around 2002, and that it had ended badly. She has a keen sense of poetic justice. Sources near the show indicate that the two aren't on speaking terms, or even being in the same room terms, and are rumored to be contractually entitled, or perhaps obliged, to be kept apart at all costs. In all, this would make it quite difficult for the two to interact or stick to the script. Number 5 Elton John and Keith Richards it's not just his own singer he can't get along with. People's champion Keith Richards has also had a beef with Sir Elton John since at least the 1980s. A quote from 1988 has Richards saying, Reg Dwight, lovely bloke, but posing. 
but the coldest shot came in 1997 when John re-recorded Candle in the Wind as a tribute to Princess Diana, with Keith commenting that the pianist's writing is limited to songs for dead blondes. A week after Diana's funeral, in apparently heartless and mean-spirited remarks, Richards referred to Elton John as, quote, writing songs for dead blondes. John, meanwhile, has referred to the Stones guitarist as a monkey with arthritis and suggesting the band should have sacked Richards in the 80s. It's, it's so pathetic, what things I like that. A monkey with arthritis trying to go on stage and look young. He also took umbrage with how Mick Jagger was discussed in Keith's autobiography. And then there's poor sloshed Lily Allen. Now, we reach a very special point in the evening. Well, you're gonna have another drink. Felton. Number four, Jeremy Clarkson and the BBC. Jezza's tenure at the Beeb could be seen as a series of slaps on the wrist after complaints from Ofcom. Eventually, the disaster of Top Gear's Argentinian adventure stuck, as did an unused clip featuring Jeremy mumbling the worst possible version of Eeny Meeny. Please be assured, I did everything in my power to not use that word. This was enough to put Clarkson on his final warning, and then he punched a producer and got the sack. Although Clarkson was in the wrong, lurking in the background was Danny Cohen, director of BBC Television and a personal nemesis to Clarkson, who rebuked Jeremy for racism over the naming of his dog, Didier Dogba. How filled are you that Top Gear is nowhere near as successful now that you're not on it? <laughs> it's a hard face to pull this one. Let me try. Number three, Robbie Williams and Jimmy Page. It's hard to imagine these two ever crossing paths, harder still to imagine them being neighbors. And yet, to Jimmy Page's chagrin, here we are. This dust-up began in 2015 when Robbie Williams was granted permission to build a perfectly ordinary basement swimming pool on his perfectly ordinary grade two listed mansion. However, this caused concern for Page, who felt the construction might damage his perfectly ordinary grade one listed mansion. That could be legal action if it comes to it. It will have to be whatever I have to do. Years on, William still doesn't have a pool and Page lives to prevent it. Robbie claims that Jimmy has slept in the garden to record noise levels, while Paige claims that Williams has taken to cranking up music from his 70s rivals and cosplaying as Robert Plant to irritate him. Well, if Jimmy Page's house could um, survive the Blitz, then he can survive my building schemes, and I thought that was really tasteless. Number two, Noel Gallagher and Liam Gallagher. Unlike Oasis, these two never stop. The first blip occurred in 1994, when Noel temporarily quit the band after Liam threw a tambourine at him. And I know his name, Noel. Oh yeah, yeah, he's naughty, he's naughty. And he's not much bigger than you, actually. The next year, Noel whapped Liam in the head with a cricket bat when the singer decided to bring a party into the studio during What's the Story Morning Glory sessions. Then there was the time Liam pulled out of NZV Unplugged so he could heckle from the balcony. Oh, God, no, that's well for real, man. Is it really? Yeah. We don't like each other, man. <laughs> All the time Liam questioned the legitimacy of Noel's child, or Liam sued Noel for suggesting he bailed on a show due to a hangover, or when Liam compared Noel and his wife Sarah to serial killers Fred and Rosemary West. It just goes on. Can you just say, can we all say hello to him? Where is he? What camera's on there? <laughs> there you Hi, go. Liam. <laughs> Before we unveil our top pick, here's a few honourable mentions. In a scathing attack while visiting children and young people in a YMCA in London, the Duke of Sussex warned parents of its negative effects. I'm pretty sure deep down inside, you know... There's a lot of love. There's a lot of love, but I don't think... I think it's it's like a private matter that became public. Right, right OK. okay. Mm -hmm. Don't stand at the back of the stage with your hands in your pockets, looking around as though you wished you were anywhere but here. Oh! Oh, you couldn't be more wrong, sir. He was never meant to be like that. I, I honestly, genuinely thought that it was she was coming on to make amends. That's what I was told that was going to happen, Anyone and we were going to have a laugh this, about it and make amends, amends for because you'd had a bit of a clash in the Big Brother yeah, house well, when you'd been there. All together. of us, yeah. yeah. Number one, Piers Morgan and vegan sausage rolls. Distracted from his regular row with J.K. Rowling, Piers Morgan squared off against a new target in 2019. Greg's Vegan Sausage Rolls. 
Already annoyed by the sheer concept of a meatless product using the word sausage, Morgan's outlook didn't become any brighter by actually sampling said product. I mean, they just stink, right? No, for one, they're delicious. Right? They're delicious, actually. Deeming the idea gastronomic appropriation, Morgan would blame a soon-to-follow hospital stay on the brief bite of sausage roll, while also labelling Greg's PC-ravaged clowns for being involved in the meatless meat business. Yet, for all Morgan's talk and bloated innards, the rolls could hardly stay on the shelves. Surely Piers and Greg's sharing a PR agency is just coincidence. Oh. <laughs> That's a good look, Piers. Oh, my God. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.